All right. I'm really tempted to just give a bunch of disclaimers. I've filmed like four takes of this already where I'm talking about my camera and why the lighting looks up, so uh, I'm not going to. I'm going to resist it. I wanted to do a quick one about my EDC system and what I'm carrying. I had lunch with a buddy a while back and he was looking for a pen during it and it was it was this weird moment because I've been around enough people. I'm around a lot of flight school students and stuff and you know flying with people associated with or not flying with them but being with people in the project I kind of get into this little insular world where I forget what it's like to not be around this group so to me I'm like well everybody carries you know your basic EDC loadout right and he was like what are you talking about and I'm like what do you throw in your pockets when you leave the house he's like oh it's easy I got my keys my phone and my wallet and I was like okay then what oh what do you mean I'm like well, come on dude like what like don't you kinda do stuff and need stuff like this like his first impulse was to go to the waitress and ask if she had a pen for him to borrow and that to me was insane like why wouldn't you have a pen that's like a basic thing but it made me realize when he asked like hey so what do you carry every day he wanted me to send him like a little checklist I ended up shooting a quick little cell phone video and I was tempted to publish that just cuz it's kinda interesting and I'm carrying the same thing pretty consistently here. But your EDC system is something like Nothing Fancy says, that you evolve over time. You learn about all the different stuff you need, and next thing you know, you have this minimum equipment list before you leave the house, because you know whatever you confront that day, it's gonna be on there. Pretty much everyone watching this, you're gonna have the main stuff countered. You're gonna be like, oh yeah, I got a knife, I got my carry weapon, I've got a multi-tool, all those things. This is my just standard everyday thing. And I'm trying to do this without dropping them hard. Look at those sexy cargo shorts. Look at that. So pretty. I think it's focused. Yeah. So this is a True Spec 24 7 pair. These are about 35 bucks. I like these ones so much, I ended up buying like three or four pairs in total. I am living on a farm like place right now, so I have like gross muddy dogs that are always running around in the irrigation tunnels and then they'll come up and paw me and stuff so these normally get gross I kind of moved away from the tans because of that because when I'm sitting on beams or I'm sitting on tarmac or something like that it, it gets gross you see the fringes it gets all muddy nasty it shows more funk on it whereas the black ones you can just wipe them off with a washcloth and mostly get all of it out either way they get dirty but these are super stain resistant even more so than the 5.11s, I'd say. I don't have a pair of 5.11 shorts now. I used to. I liked them all right. They were a little uh, swishy for me. I don't like that. You can tell these ones are too. They're still pretty bad, but they're not as high-pitched as the 5.11s. I, the pricing on them, you know, whatever. I could always get them cheaper, but I feel like you do get a good amount of value for them. These really do everything right for dude shorts. The pockets are super deep. The system down below is great too. These cargo ones, you have a little outside exterior pocket and then you have an interior one that actually has two panels. We'll see that in a sec. But for 35 bucks, it's a pretty good deal. It comes in like tan and uh, that coyote color, I'm pretty sure. And then they have one called stone that's kind of cool. It's like an off tan color. I I think it's a little lighter than I would expect from stone if I'm remembering right. They, they might have camo, but pretty much stick to this and black and just alternate between those. I did get a pair in navy, and it really just looks like black with a, a little blue hue and the light, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's start with the top pockets. Top right, normally a knife pocket. This one, I try not to carry anything. It's gonna be abrasive, like keys or quarters or coins or any of that, because it usually damages the finishes on my knives. So that's titanium and then a blue mix that I did. That one's kinda cool. I love how it turned out. Looks great. So that one's in there. Other than that, there's nothing in there. Usually I'll have like a credit card or something, just whatever the card of the day is, I'll throw it in there. That way I can check out easier in line, so you just pull it out and go. To the right of that, this is my uh, writing utensil suite. Oh man, that's the nerdiest freaking thing I've ever said. This is my writing utensil suite. I need a pocket protector. So, Sharpie, basic. Always have a Sharpie. They do so much. You can write on anything. If you just got some food and you left it in the fridge, Woohoo! You can now write your name on the food and have people not take it. Uh, pencils, if you've seen my past ones, you know I used to love the Graph Gear pencil. I think it's Pentel. And I had three of them. Each is about $6. And I remember splurging on them going, I'm never going to lose this mechanical pencil because it's so expensive. And guess what? I lost them. 
lost them, as in I'm pretty sure people took them off my desk, or I had them in a plane or something, then they dropped in a cushion as I was getting out, and no one ever returned it. So, a lesson, if you buy expensive stuff, engrave your name on it. I've started doing that with more of these. This is a pack I got from Costco. I think it's like a buck fifty per. This is a, a plenty fine pencil, but it's always going to be a problem whenever you're throwing them in a pocket when you have that nib. It tends to stab into stuff, and that makes it, it just gets stuck up, so that sucks. But excellent pens. The G2 Pilots, I like this size. The .7 is awesome. It's thick enough that you can see it. I like the blue. This is another pack I got from Costco. You gotta wait for them to go on sale and you can actually get a pretty good deal on them. Otherwise, grab them on Amazon like that. I like blue. People write in blue less often, so whenever I write something, I kinda can pick my own writing out of it. Like if you're sharing logbooks with somebody or you're you're opening stuff up and having to keep track of it, it's just a little bit better. And you notice with both of these, they have some spray paint on them. That's because when I get the pack, I crack it open and then you know, kind of stencil off a little bit and then I spray them with this because some places actually have these same things and it helps me remember and know what one's mine and then when people take it or borrow it because they aren't prepared, they end up giving it back. And I've actually had a place once I was not really working with but renting from and the guy had a bunch of G2s and that was like his go-to pen in the plane. And I had a black one at the time and I was writing with it and as I left he was like, oh no, that stays with the plane, that's the, the pen for the logbook. And I was like, no, this one's mine. And he like opened up the logbook and looked at it. I was like, oh, okay. So easy lesson, mark your stuff. And it, it saves you a little bit of money over time. I still absolutely love the Varsity. It's excellent. If you're playing your cards right, you can actually refill it with some ink and it's pretty cheap. The nub is great. It goes on thick. It writes easy. I love fountain pens so much. I especially love these because they're lightweight. They don't like explode as easy. I've had really good history with them. But it is getting tougher to refill my older ones. I don't know if they're drying out or what, because I've always taken care of them and cleaned them and stuff, but lately they're just not doing too well. The old ones. So this is a new set. I think about a buck twenty a piece is an okay price as long as you can get a couple refills out of it. That's a, a great pen though. And if you're carrying it with you, this is a much better loaner. When I can, I like to have this one like in the front if it's a pretty durable knife that I'm carrying. That way if I do give it to people, I can keep the cap and then they try to look at it because they they're a lot less apt to take it and keep it and throw it in their pocket if they're sitting there like this going uh and they say do you have the cap and then they give it back to you so pretty cool but having the g2s is just easier to write with like if i'm driving something or something oh let me take a note on that boom done okay so that's a simple one that's oh man that's nerdy okay so now we go to the left side you can see in this side of the pen pocket i put a multi-tool i could talk about multi-tools for freaking ever like, look at this. This is a Leatherman Sidekick. Awesome one. I think about 45 bucks most of the time if you want it. I have uh, one other. I have one Wave, and I had to get the separate clip for that. That would be, like, probably 110 all in if you got one of those. They're all good. I do prefer the ones with the pliers in them. And I'm I'm not going to show this one to you. This is one that I actually Cerakoted, but I kind of burst a spray paint can two days ago, and so it's been sitting in brake cleaner for a little bit. So it's not looking too hot. And i got to lube it and clean it, but whatever. I've had a weird attrition rate on all my multi-tools lately. So it's doing all right, uh, 45 for that. Wave is a little bit more. The S2 I really like. And the thing I like about all Leatherman stuff is that they're you know sleek and well-designed and stuff. The only problem is they don't do clips unless you buy in. This one is, I think, the only one that I can think of that directly came with one. Otherwise, you kind of got to buy it. Uh, I could talk about multi-tools forever. I don't really have too many with me right now, so just a sidekick. It's a good one. It's got all the tools you need, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's see, the left pocket, I normally have my audio receiver in there, and I think I took it out because I have my things. So, I'm in the new iPhone system, it sucks, I know, whatever. But this is a Bluetooth sender receiver, I have it taped so it's only in receive only mode. And then just a pair of Xiaomi pistons. The new versions of these, I have yet to try. They used to be like $21, $22, the new ones I think are $28, and they now have an Amazon's Choice. These sound okay, I had an original pair of them, I had the Piston Ones or Classics, who knows if you can get them anymore. These have been okay though, I got two years out of my first pair, I'm about to get two years out of this one too. You can see the tops look great, there's no fray this is a really good quality rubber cable up here, but then they did the fabric one down here and it sucks. 
There's a little clip. You can buy a pack of those clips for a couple bucks and it'll get you maybe 12 or something. Kind of nice. They work all right. I do prefer like a button up shirt and then wrapping this around the buttons and you can kind of thread it that way, which is another reason I got this. I like being able to have just my headphones set up without moving it around as opposed to having it plugged into my phone so I can play podcasts all day, then pulling out the phone and yanking on everything and dicking it up. Once I have it set up and I'm mobile, I like to have things just kind of stay where they are. So it's a pretty good one. This is an Aki brand. I paid $19. It was on a lightning deal. I would say it's worth it. It has pretty good battery life. It drives the headphones pretty well if you're listening to music. Uh, stock price of $28, probably not. There are a ton of variations on the market, so I can't really recommend this until I try the other ones. This is the first and only one I've tried of it, so there may be better. If you have anything better, oh, definitely let me know, because I'm always trying to make my system better. And more battery life I like, you'll see with my other Bluetooth stuff, I, you tend to have to have spares when it gets that small. I love having spare batteries, but when it's internal, you don't really have much choice. Okay. But other than that, I normally leave them pretty empty. Having stuff in here and sitting on them tends to break the stuff and wear through the pans, and that's not great. So great for when you're mobile. I'll throw like my set of keys in the left back pocket and then take them out before I sit down and have to reassign them somewhere else. Okay, so right side or left side, I guess. Left side, I normally do spare mags in here. The cool part of these, you can see the two separate baffles in there. So you have it separated in the middle. I'm pretty sure it's sized for like two 5.56 mags, which is cool. In this, I actually have my Ruger LCP2 mags. So the big difference between what I'm carrying now firepower wise and what I used to is I've now moved to the LCP2. It is a better gun. I used to carry the P3AT a lot, the Beretta I carried a lot, and I carried a lot of J-frame stuff. Lately, I'm in a less awesome area and I've actually had some interesting adventures with randos and road rage and stuff that convinced me that I need something a little more effective as long as I'm doing the things I'm doing where I'm doing them. That's a little paint pen thing. Get a sweet paint pen. You can actually fill in all those colors and uh, turn it into something interesting. I like how that looks though. It's cool. So I normally carry four mags on the left side. They're pretty light and that's a good amount of rounds to let me take care of whatever I need to. I never will, but it's nice having that peace of mind. When you have someone trying to run you off the road, that's always fun. If necessary, I'll have a light. This is a little cork. Uh, what is it? Just mini one, two, three. That's cool. Uh, if I can get away with an extra battery, I'll definitely have one of those. But that's more at nighttime. If I know I'm going out in the day and I'll be back, I probably won't take it with just to kind of cut down on weight. All depends. So that's left pocket. And then I'll have the wallet in the outer part. Because with these three baffles, you have the two mag baffles there. And then you have just the main compartment still that can still expand even more. And so I'll have the wallet there, anything else I need. Usually, like, car keys or something can go in there because they're not going to scratch anything. So pretty good area. And then you have this little tiny one. Uh, the left pocket in this tends to be the one I carry stuff with a lot more because the right one actually has my pistol in it. So I try to keep that Velcro in tip-top shape. You always got to keep it clean and debris-free, and it kind of helps it out. So left tiny pocket. This is where I carry, like, my small Bluetooth stuff. I still love these air fan, whatever they are. Ear, I don't know, even know what to call them, like earbud things. That's a new type. This comes up as a... S520, I think, in the model selector. Has about an hour of battery life. It's not great. It was under the brand name Tupoot, which seemed very odd to me, but whatever. It works. It sounds okay. It seems like it has more sophisticated software than the other one, but it doesn't last that long, so whatever kind of goes off the shelf. And then I have a couple of these. By now, I think I've bought maybe 10 or 20 of them. No, not that many. I bought three last year, and I think I bought three this year. Uh, between the washing machine and sometimes losing them, you do kind of have an attrition rate, but they last about three and a half hours. They work well, they don't sound amazing, but the capability is great and they're very under the radar. So you can listen to stuff and at least have something interesting to listen to when you're in places you otherwise might not. Especially if you have long hair, man. I had long hair in high school for that express purpose. That way I could just rock out and have my headphones in all the time and no one would be able to notice. It was pretty much worth it, aside from having to look at the pictures today. There's that, and that's it for that one. I do carry one of these. Uh, I tape stuff in funky colors, that way I know it's mine. So, left side complete. Let's go right side. So this is where it really starts off with the LCP2, and you can actually notice the difference in the strength between the right and the left side, between these two. So I open this one a lot less. This is an Uncle Mike's Sidekick Holster Size 10 with an LCP2. And yeah, I do like it. It's a great, easy 380 to fire. It's beautiful, not really, but it looks better than some of their other stuff. I mean, it does everything you want it to. The mags aren't a like cheap bunch. I think I ended up paying 25 a piece for all these. 
So in total, I have five magazines for it, five or six, can't remember. Originally, I just had two and I carried around this many rounds on a day-to-day -day basis and just didn't like that as much. So I like having a little bit more, but it fits in great. This whole system goes in the front baffle. So it just goes in that one right there, goes in there and then you're on your way. Then this will stay closed. If this ever starts really losing its tonicity or whatever you would call the equivalent for Velcro, then yeah, I'd have to reassess this position, but right now I have even run with this whole setup and it works just fine. It stays closed, it stays how I need it to, and it's not clunking around too much. I think the big deciding factor in shorts is how far you size it to yourself. Like if you size it, if you're a size 30 waist and you get a 30, cool. If you're a 30 and you get a 32, then you'll have a lot more flop and this will be longer. And then it, it does that thing where it like shifts around as you're running and then you're gonna have your pistol smashing into your knee caps all the time. And that's not as fun. And the last one, this is where I put my apartment key. You can actually see my little tiny uh, frat girl mace cannon here. Kind of fun. All kinds of fun, really. And then that one's taped too. That's just to help me find it when I throw it in a gym bag because I have my gym lock on here. I don't really like having tons of extra keys. That's like my gym lock. That's my P.O. box locker. And that's my room key. Pretty cool. I mean, it's small. It's not cool. It's a set of keys. I don't know why I said that. And then my car keys aren't much different. I do have the little blue tassel thing on there from a watch company. And then I have my alarm thing. But other than that, it's one key. I like to keep them light. I don't really like carrying a, a ton like I'm an old prison cell janitor. Doesn't really do it for me. My bike keys are the same. Boop, doop, ba, doo. There's my Gibby, and then you can see the Tour Tech ones. If you have small bike keys for your luggage, I would definitely carry spares because they have a tendency to break when you're on a trip. Don't know why. They're just small, and you have to do a lot of leverage with them. Other than that, I do have a couple other things to switch in as necessary, but like the SIG 938, this one would be in my rotation a lot more for carry if I had more mags for it. I left two of them at home, so I'm stuck with just the two now, and I haven't been able to pony up 50 bucks a piece for them. If you can find them used, I think you're looking at around 30 a piece still. Not too bad. Another 123. This I actually prefer for nighttime stuff. I'll carry this and then a four-pack of the 123 in a little holder thing, rechargeables. And this you can just, like, throw in your mouth and then shine a light wherever you need it, and then you have your big old lanyard. That way you can hook it around your neck. It's an easier system. It is nice. Honestly, if I'm going at a nighttime system, I'll probably have a reserve bag just with extra lights, extra batteries, batteries all around, because at that point, I'm towards the end of the day, I'll probably need some health. I was about to say health. Some battery life on there. So this is just a little bit easier to use. Pretty cool little thing. You get a pack of these little ID holders for pretty cheap and use them in this way. It's pretty awesome. And then... And then there's this. This is actually one of my favorite little Leathermans. It's, a, I think, just original. It's like the Leatherman tool. Uh, kind of basic. It doesn't really have anything too special with it. Just this, you know, the same old sweet, but it doesn't really lock or any of that. None of the special new fangled tricks. Just cool, old school performance. So that one's cool. That makes it in there. I do like my SOGs. I like the SOG power locks when they first had the giant gears on them, but I can't find my other one. I think I put it in my flight bag yesterday. So that's what I'm carrying, man. That's all my standard stuff. You can actually look around and see some of the other trinkets. I don't know if I kept that little blurb about the cadets in there. Yeah, I moved. Yeah. So that's it, man. That's most of the stuff. That's most of my carry equipment. And that's the new shirt design. I have a couple of those in. I really didn't stock up on that much. I don't really have space around here for them. So. We're in limited space, limited quantities, and then we have the patches in too. If you want those, go ahead and grab them. If not, like, whatever, dude. Whatever, man. Hats are on the way, and in fact, I'll give you guys a special sneak preview on them. This doesn't really look like the end result. This is our prototype. Part of the reason this has taken so long was doing it from my original specs. It looked just about like this. It was kind of tough getting this whole thing. It was supposed to kind of be demarcated differently, and uh, I don't know, not really. We ended up not loving this execution as we went to final press on them, so it'll look a lot more like our original ones where it's a full stripe thing. And The new ones are gonna look fantastic, but in changing them and getting the sample things, uh, it just added more length to the time, and I lost my spot in line for manufacturing. I will say that last time we did changes to it, they ended up sending like a snapback version. It was like super short brim, flat, and then this was all, I was like, what, how? Because at no point in time do we tell them to go snapback, but they decided to, so. This is just the normal one. This is a, a depth tester. We got them in a 
couple different sizes trying to find one that fits the greatest amount of people because I feel like our last ones were pretty good but they were a little on the small side I kept hearing from people so we're going to have it with both our designs the shark design and then this one it'll be woven on it'll look great but that's the uh, sneak preview look for them around the end of July is what I'm hearing so maybe August 1 will be set up sweet deal guys see you around